Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Table Tennis Talk. This is our first one for 2021. Um, you can see our faces, <laughs> which is a totally new phenomenon. Uh, hopefully, it will be successful and um, we won't have to hide in shame. Um, but I am a, I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Lewis, and here I have Joey Cochran. Joey, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Good to see you. Doing good. I can good. finally I, say I, that and have it actually be correct. It makes sense in the context of a podcast, yeah. Um, I'm glad to see that you are uh, making up for my lack of hair. Yeah, um, <laughs> we're growing it out. <laughs> so <laughs> finally, uh, you told me. Um, you told me uh, you. Uh, this is the first time you've had long hair like that. Yeah, this is the longest it's ever been, and I'm going to see how long I can go uh, before cutting it. It's been when I lived in Sweden, it got pretty long, but yeah, not this long. This is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new huh. new uh experiment for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I grew my hair out long, people would just say I had a mullet, so I'll <laughs> I'll keep shaving it. <laughs> yeah. Probably better if that's yeah. So uh how has your um I, I I mean I would say February, but like we haven't had a podcast for uh two months plus. We took last month off just because uh, things were crazy for me and I think for you too. Um, it's been, yeah, pretty busy new year so far. So yeah, it's, yeah. How's your, how's your time been? It's been good. So we have our, our baby Liam, he's got a couple teeth now. He's starting to eat solid wow. foods, which is fun. Um, cool. The, the last week has been like, he went in and got some shots for like vaccines and stuff and he they gave him a flu shot, which I don't really know why they needed to give him a flu shot, but they did. Um, and he got sick, huh. and I think he got us sick a little bit. So I'm a little stuffy, but um, oh, no. yeah, it, we went and got COVID tests just to make sure. Um, and it sure. we, it came back negative, which was good. So um, it's nothing too serious, but like it's caused us to like just be more secluded, I guess. <laughs> and um and then sure. it's it's impacted my my YouTube, but overall it's like it's been a really good couple of months. Um, yeah, my my cool. my business stuff has been like pretty booming. Um, I started to buy things internationally, so I my broker has been helping me <laughs> make with this purchase in from Brazil, but it's been like a total nightmare <laughs> the guy is like never really responds okay. and he needs to mail this document to oh, no. their like governing agency and he's like well i'm not going to sure. be at a printer until monday he lives like in the middle of the amazon or something somewhere in the jungle and he doesn't have access to a printer <laughs> and he needs to mail this document and so i like my broker's like, I've never seen this before. Like, this is the weirdest thing. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty weird. Like, let's get the show on the road. Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, like I have all my money tied up in escrow. Like we need to close. And it's just been. Is this legal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it legal? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it feels like it's not. <laughs> but um, yeah, just I I'm hoping I'm not getting robbed. I feel like okay. I am sometimes because it's been it's been in escrow for it's the 21st today so almost two months i think i think two months today actually i think 21st or 22nd oh. of december okay and i i i kind of laugh at it but like i don't know like am i getting taken for a ride right now <laughs> like i don't know we'll see we'll see hopefully yeah. by next month huh. so. um other than that like the okay. last couple of weeks i've been right. playing a lot of video games with my brother um we've been playing wildlands which is kind cool. of an older one but it's fun because it's like really low stress and you can kind of just pick it up and put it down anytime. And it's just kind of been, been fun and nice. So yeah. But what about, what about cool. you? <laughs> How have your months been? I've, uh, yeah, I haven't been doing uh, business with the Brazilians, but um, <laughs> maybe I should. It sounds pretty cool. It's exciting. Um, <laughs> um, it's a little bit slow moving, but yeah. Um, a few weeks, well, the big thing is a few weeks ago, I, um, last year, as, as you know, because I had to stop doing our, um, table tennis lessons, I like pulled a muscle in my like abs, which made it where I couldn't sit down without being in pain, which mm. is 
really unfortunate. Yeah, um, for you. It means that I either have to stand up or lay down. Um, <laughs> and a couple weeks ago, it, it originally happened because I, I sneeze. I sneeze way too hard. And so I sneezed too hard and I pulled this muscle somehow. And then it just kind of bothered me for really for months last year. And um, I, uh, I pulled it again from sneezing, unfortunately. And um, yeah, it's been bothering me for the last two weeks. So I've been having to, at first, I just laid down for like a week. And then I've been standing up. And so that's, that's been pretty hard. That's been pretty hard. So I can't um, imagine like not being <laughs> able to sit down. I just, yeah. especially being in technology, like where you pretty much sit all the time <laughs> in front of yeah. a computer, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I already had a standing desk, so I was able to, well, you know, good. I, I, I kind of stood part of the time anyways, but it's hard to stand for like eight hours a day. It's not easy. Mm. Um, but, um, other than that, I finally finished the book that I was working on. Um, cool. The last podcast we talked about that. So it will probably be on Amazon in about a week. Um, what's it, but, what's it called? So it's called the cloud developer workbook and it's, um, it's, a bunch of exercises and kind of like it's guidance for software developers who want to learn how to work with AWS. So it's basically exercises. It's a hundred exercises. It's based on this kind of series of tweets that I was doing at the end of last year where um, people have been doing this hundred days of cloud exercise where they take a hundred days and for a hundred days, they like try to do things with the cloud and learn and get certified and stuff like that. Cool. And so as somebody who's been working on the, in the cloud for years, I was like, well, I can imagine if, if I was going to do this hundred days of cloud thing, I would have no idea where to start or like what to do or really anything. And so I started trying to do, I did a series of tweets, a hundred tweets where I was basically trying to give people tips, like on day three, do this on day four, do this. And then I kind of adapted that into a more expansive um, uh, book and with more instructions, more links, um, more, more descriptive. Maybe. Yeah, more structured. So Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, so that is out. That's something I've always like, I'm an, I'm an engineer, but I don't program much. So it's like, yeah, I got to, I got to be better at programming. <laughs> maybe this is the book for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll put a link in the, in the, in the show notes. So if people are interested in learning the cloud, they can grab that. It's, it's for free from the website, but if you want like the Kindle version, and then there'll also be a physical version, like a print on demand thing oh. through Amazon. So nice. So the free one is like a, like an ebook type thing or it's just a PDF. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Um, before I got injured, I was playing a lot of VR. Um, I've got a, I've got a, especially VR table tennis. I've got a big VR table tennis tournament update. I wanted to <laughs> handle after this, but, um, I also recently got, I, I don't know if we talked about this, but I backed a Kickstarter like a year and a half ago for Bloodborne, the board game. <laughs> so Bloodborne is like a PlayStation four video game and, um, they made a, a Bloodborne a board game adaptation, but it had so many um, expansions. So it was like a core game, but then with the Kickstarter, you could buy all the expansions with everything stacked up. It actually was, I think three and a half feet tall with all of the boxes <laughs> for one board game. Um, I, I kind of joked that I was going to have to throw out all my other board games just to store this one board game before it came. But um, anyways, I got that, um, played it a few times. It's it's really cool. Um, I still have not figured out how to store everything. So um, that's it's been something taking up, definitely taking up my like man cave is like it's kind of committed to Bloodborne, the board game now. So. I've seen I've seen the picture. You sent me the picture and it's awesome. Like I like board games a lot, but I don't think I mean <laughs> I don't know, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> yeah, with it's, that. Yeah. yeah. 
The good thing is you can play it solo. So it, it's multiplayer, but you can also just play it by yourself. So with with COVID, like, I mean, you know, we used to play board games together and I have a board game group that does Glo- Gloomhaven, but because of COVID, we just do it online now. So at least with this board game, I can just play it by myself. So yeah, that's that's perfect for these times. <laughs> yeah. Especially if since you have so much, like who knows how long COVID's gonna last. Like you'll have three <laughs> yeah. and a half feet of board game to to uh I don't know, explore to, through. To play, yeah. I mean, I feel like if I ever get through everything, I deserve like some kind of medal or something <laughs> because it's it's just like it's kind of unbelievable. I mean, I've just on the core just on one of the campaigns in the core game because it's it's a hard board game so i i kept losing i probably already spent like six or seven hours just on one campaign so like achievements yeah i mean doing like the whole thing i I do need achievements um okay so let me tell you about this tournament first of all like you know playing in a tournament during covid is kind of like a an achievement in itself right (laughs) Um, you, a couple months ago, you told me about a Facebook group, a table tennis VR Facebook group, right? Uh-huh. And, um, I think you even told me like, Hey, they, they do tournaments. Um, so they, they do, they, they organize them every month and, um, they're, they're, ba- they're double elimination tournaments. Um, people, c- people join from all over the world, uh, which is really cool. And, um, I joined the one in February cause a, I wanted to compete, but B, I also was just like, I wanted to have something to tell the podcast, um, audience about, <laughs> about this tournament. Um, so it was really cool. It was like, it was crazy. Like it was, um, so, so the way that it worked is they do, there's two, vr games there's tape there's 11 table tennis vr and there's racket fury and so what what i've read about racket fury is that 11 table tennis vr is more realistic than racket fury racket fury is a little more arcadey um so that's the only one i'm that interested in but they do the tournaments for both games and so basically you put your name in the hat and they um spread people out just kind of like a normal tournament. They use that challenge. I think it's called website. Are you familiar with that? I haven't heard of that. No, I think it's like an online thing that you can do like brackets and tournaments and stuff. And it's, it makes it easy. Um, So then you get matched up with a person and then, you know, usually via Facebook, you, you talk to the person and try to find a time to meet. And, and every, every time you get, um, matched up with someone there's a certain period of time that you have to play them before like somebody defaults okay um for the first ones it was like two or it was like two days or something um and so the first guy i matched up i got matched up was um enigma with uh letters numbers in there um he's from england and finding time was really difficult because he was on Greenwich mean time and, and we're on mountain time. Uh-huh. And, um, so I think I played him my afternoon, his morning or something like that, or no, maybe it was after he got off work and it was my morning. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really weird. Um, but the crazy thing is I was really worried about lag, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, it has sometimes to be when- like pretty much perfect. Cause you're going to be trying to hit the ball. Right. And if you're delayed even a split second, it's going to impact you. So totally. And so like sometimes you get lag with people and basically what will happen is you'll hit the ball to them and it will look like they miss it and then they will hit it. So it's like, you know, you've got like a half second or a second where, you know, you, you kind of just have to be ready because you don't know if, if they actually missed it or if they actually hit it and it's coming back to you. Um, it adds an extra element when there's that lag and it's still pretty fun, but it can be, um, frustrating obviously, but there was like no lag. Like it was so, it, I mean, it was almost like it, it wasn't like they were directly in front of you, but the lag was so low that, I mean, it just felt like a normal game. I was playing with somebody who was like, you know, in the States or in Salt Lake City or something. Um, 
it was so cool. Um, I started the match and I wanted to record it because I, I, you know, I knew we were going to do the podcast and I want to put it on here. Um, unfortunately, there was some weird technical glitch. It was like everything was choppy. And man, when the video is choppy in VR, you just can't do anything because mm. it's like yeah. you can't like it's like the world being choppy. It's like it doesn't it doesn't work. Um, so I had to back out of the game and then get back in. Luckily, that worked, um, and um, I did end up losing. He won both matches, but um, some of them were pretty close. Um, and so, you play. How yeah, does the I, format work? You play like two out of three, or three out of five, and then two matches, or yeah, we do out best out of five, but we do it based on matches. Um, so you based do like five in matches. Yeah, so like each each match is best out of five. And okay. then you do best out of five the matches just because oh, okay, gotcha. like a single match a lot of times is not really enough to, to compensate like okay. to like, so yeah, to three to five out. for each match. And then you play three out of five matches. So you have to win three matches to, to beat your opponent. I'm wrong. Best out of three, not best oh, out of best five. out of three best matches. Out of three. Yeah, best out okay. of three matches, best out of three games. Oh, best. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you win. If somebody does a clean sweep, they win four games. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Um. So then they they did they did bump it down to a losers bracket. So I played against another guy, A Kissin. Um. Again, I also lost, both <laughs> matches. but it was really close. I mean, I feel confident. Like it wasn't like I got on there and it was a bunch of Joey Cochran's and I just got like smoked. Like it felt more like, um, the competition was reasonable at my level, which is, which is good. Cool. Um, so I feel pretty optimistic. I, I, depending on my like injury, I'll probably keep like like also go in for the march tournament and just try to do it every month and get better and better so so i think i've told you this i'm gonna try to buy this in april so maybe for the april tournament but more likely may tournament i'm gonna be i'm gonna be playing these as well okay it sounds so fun and yeah i don't know i want to join in The I think the coolest thing is that it was just like you you were playing against people all over the world and like actually like nobody had to travel like you were actually playing against that person and i guess it's something like because vr and especially vr table tennis is like more physical like it's not it's almost just something that hasn't i feel like it's kind of new like playing video games online has obviously been around for a long time but it's just like being able to do something with your body and that trans translating it's like a whole new type of esport basically um it feels so, like i don't know of any other sports that are that are like that are in vr right i think it's yeah table tennis and that's pretty much it so it's like the yeah it's the sport <laughs> the esport yeah. sport so yeah and that's cool so, like i it's there's some are you able to communicate with the people or do you have to just talk to them over facebook or when you're playing the VR, can you, can you talk to them or? Yeah, it has a mic. So like you can, ter- usually what, what the way that we did it with um, both of my matches is like before the match, you turn the mic on, you say hi, and, and then you, ter- you mute it while you're playing just so you're not grunting um, disturbing and the other person. Cause like you can hear people like breathing in your ears and it's just kind of like, that's not, um, <laughs> it's not that great. So it's not um, good sportsmanship. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um Do you say sorry when you hit the edge? I do. I do. Um some people do too. It's kind of weird though, because like, well, I don't unmute my mic and say sorry. I usually like hold my racket up or something. Like okay. you can't really hold your finger up. So it's it's kind of a weird way to say sorry. Um but uh and you know, when people do a good shop, you like clap with your things. Cause what you can see, I think we mentioned this before, you can see their headset, like with the way their headset moves uh-huh. and you can see both, um, controllers. So okay. you can see the left hand, which is, or, you know, the, the non racket hand, which is used to toss the ball and then the racket hand. Okay. Um, what about the, so I've seen like the 3d printed racket attachments. Do you use that or 
Yeah. Okay. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. I, I got, um, since our last podcast and I, I think I sent you a picture. I'll, I'll try to add, we're going to add, like, we'll be adding like videos and pictures on the actual video. So if you're listening to this, there's going to be a YouTube video on Joey's YouTube, um, that will show you pictures and stuff. But, um, yes, I got, I got one from, um, San Lackey, um, is the name of the company. They actually sent me a left-handed racket when I ordered a right-handed racket and like within two days had me a right-handed racket for free said you can keep the left-handed racket and I, you know, just shout out to them for being like good customer service. Um, but yeah, you, you, you basically get the, you strap in the controller to it and then inside 11 table tennis VR, they have a preset for the, um, the 3d printed controller so that it will, like kind of rotate the position of the racket so it matches oh. that 3D printed racket. I was perfectly. wondering because when I saw it, it looked like it was like if you were to hold it, the it yeah. looked like it would be at a weird angle. So it's interesting yeah. that they've already incorporated that and figured it into into the game because it's a different it's company so cool. that makes the the attachment, right? It's not the same company. Right. And there, there are several other companies that make attachments too. And okay. there's presets and 11 table tennis for many of them. Not, all, not all of them. Okay. But, um, at least like San Lackey was a, was a really good one. And like, I've been playing with it for months and it's like, just, just like new and works really awesome. It's really cool. What I, what I haven't quite perfected is being as like, um, like maybe flexible with the racket holding racket position and stuff. So, um, it's just something I have to get better at, but do you change um, your grip at all between the forehand and the backhand You're using the shake hand grip? I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, not really. I mean, I think I do loosen up a little on my backhand. Um, and sometimes when I serve, if I do kind of like a pendulum serve, like I'll kind of like try to hold it a little more like where my, you know, more of like a pendulum serve thing, but I've been doing like a tomahawk serve a lot and the, um, whatever this serve is called where you throw it up and you hit it under backhand. Um, I don't, yeah, I guess backhand serve. Yeah. Okay. I've been doing those a lot. Cause then you don't really have to change your grip. Um, and the tomahawk serve is, is a little easier to do. Um, especially in VR, you don't have to kind of move as much. So I don't know. Man, I can't wait to try it. I'm yeah. I, yeah, I'll have to let you know when I, when I get it and then we'll have to play each other or something. Maybe at the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> you used to have an Oculus Quest, didn't you? I had an Oculus Rift, Rift? maybe. Rift? Yeah, I won it at like a, in a drawing. Yeah. So, and it was yeah. worth, I don't know, six or $700. So brand yeah. new. So I ended up just selling it because I didn't, it, you had to like, <laughs> you had to, attach it to your computer it wasn't like the quest 2 right. where you can just it's just a standalone device you had to com attach right. it to your computer and i didn't have a good enough computer i just used my oh. laptop from work for my work stuff and then i just use it for personal stuff i don't usually game or Got do it. much on my computer anyway so yeah, i didn't yeah. i didn't have a way to play with it so i just like sure. i would rather just have the i think i sold it for like 500 dollars. so yeah. maybe 400 okay. i don't remember but I'd i was thinking i'd rather have the money than spending money on a computer that could play it. So for sure. Yeah. I, one thing that I, I was clueless about is I thought that 11 table tennis VR was some kind of new game for the quest Two, but it's actually been around for a while. Oh really? Um, and it, yeah. And it's available on different platforms. So I think uh, okay. pretty much every VR like PC VR platform it's released for. So um, it's funny, sometimes you'll play people and they'll have different types of controllers and it's because they're playing on like a rift or a quest uh, one, or I think, um, maybe valve index has it as well. So like, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of cool. You get people from every, and there's a cross play. Like you're not just playing against quest two, you play against everybody. So it. that's cool. That's neat. Cool. Okay. So let's move on. Um, there, there, <laughs> Not much table tennis going on uh, over since since the year started. Uh, Seems but like there was eleven the, table tennis is like holding more tournaments than anybody right now. <laughs> where it's at, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, definitely. They need to televise those. Um, which actually, 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 they sort of are. If you go in the Facebook group, some people live stream their matches, so you can. Um, <laughs> Eleven Table Tennis VR already has better um, social media presence than ITTF. Sorry, <laughs> ITTF. Um, the um, All Japan kind of the Japanese national tournament uh, took place, um, I think last month and or maybe it was the beginning of this month. Yeah. It's been, it's um, been a few weeks. Yeah. And it was, I, I haven't seen everything, but it was, it was pretty interesting. Similar to last year, there was no audience. It was just kind of them playing and then people taking pictures, yeah. um, which, is always kind of weird. Um, the photographers, I was, I don't know if you watched, I mean, I don't know what matches you watch, but I was noticing the photographers. They're like, it's kind of almost distracting. They all like move in sync and they're all like this bunch and they all like, they put their cameras oh. up at the same time. They take them down at the same time. It's like, it's just, I don't oh, know if funny. you noticed that. And, or I only watched one major match in, from the tournament. Mm. It was a quarterfinal match. And it was like, just I don't know. I couldn't get over the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. So. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it was kind of interesting results. So like, um, you know, usually what you would expect is like Harimoto would win the men's and Mima Ito would win the women's, and mm -hmm. um, definitely the total... top seeds by quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was a total upset. So Harimoto actually lost in the semifinals to Mizuki Oikawa, who is like number 60 in the world. Um, you know, decent player, but like doesn't play a lot internationally and like isn't really that great, I would say. Um, he beat Harimoto and then he won in the finals against um, Masataka Morizono, who is another like kind of like good player, but not like really out there. I love him a lot. Cause he's so like physical, like he jumps like a frog <laughs> <laughs> all the time. And, um, he, I don't know. He's, he's one of my favorite players just cause of his personality. But like in terms of playing, like he usually is, does not do that great. Um, so to see him in the finals was surprising to see Mizuki Oikawa beat him and take the finals is like, kind of unbelievable i don't know it's, i mean that's probably got to be on. one of his best tournaments ever right like i mean sure winning it and then beating i mean just beating harimoto is an amazing win right yeah so and harimoto yeah, um, i was watching him play i think it was a quarterfinal match mm -hmm. and he he was playing a chopper and it was really close a really good game you can find him on youtube and i think it was 11 8 in the seventh and i love watching mm -hmm. choppers play <laughs> so yeah, it was. I don't know. It was pretty fun. That's funny that it went to seven games because both finals went to seven games too. Um, I don't know. I'll ask you about that in a second. But for the women's, um, because it was Mima Ito and Kasumi Ishikawa, and Kasumi Ishikawa actually beat Mima Ito, which is like another thing that probably hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah, not for long. I mean, they're both um, good players. At least that one. I mean, we all know who Kasumi is, so she's yeah she's been on the world stage for a while and is a, is really, really a good player. So that right. one was a little less surprising, but still surprising to me that yeah. Mima Ito lost that one. Right. Totally. Cause, um, Ishikawa is, she's older. Um, I think she's probably, I don't think she's in her thirties yet, but she might be like 29 now. Um, so kind of, you know, that's usually when people, you know, start their star starts fading in international table tennis, unless they're like, team a bowl yeah. um, most other people um you know the 20s is a, is a sweet spot and yeah it was it was really surprising to kind of see her um beat mima ito but yeah that game also went to seven and so i i was curious to ask you if you had any like thoughts or insight about like is there something about like not playing or um like, why are all these games going to seven games um, for these national tournaments? Like, what it, what's going on? Do you think um, that's a good question? I I don't know actually. <laughs> the the seven games. I think that maybe 
people are just hungry to play, right? So if you're mm. a lot of times when there's an upset, it's not going to be like Kasumi Ishikawa is probably not going to be Mimo. She's probably not going to beat Mima Ito in straight games, right? If she's going to win, it's probably yeah. going to be pretty close, and that's yeah, that's really what happened. So maybe that she's just like really eager to play, and she's got a lot of fire. And Mima Ito is thinking maybe I, I mean, I've won this a million times, and maybe didn't practice as hard. It's hard yeah, to yeah. practice when you don't have tournaments coming up. Like hmm. I don't know. That's just, these are all. This is all just speculation. So, um, yeah, maybe. Maybe she thought she had it in the bag, and then Ishikawa, I don't know, took it out. <laughs> hmm. It's hard to beat anyone in straight games when you're the underdog. So, yeah. Yeah, games. for sure. Well, Ishikawa's curry, I still remember that fondly. So <laughs> It's really good. <laughs> yeah. The, okay, the so... Haramoto, oh, though, okay. like, he, he didn't seem like he was himself. Like, he was, yeah. he was himself as far as, like, the screaming goes, but, like, it seemed like he was making a lot of errors. That was mm. just my own observation of it. But yeah, mm. I don't know. Seven games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so uh, the one thing, like obviously since there's not a lot of table tennis to talk about in the past, um, there is the next world table tennis like event thing um, coming up and it's for the Middle East hub it's in Doha, Qatar, and um, it's happening kind of the middle, uh, beginning middle of March, um, which should be really cool. I think this is like the first, I mean, because the one, the China, um, what was it, Macau? It was WTT Macau, right? Mm -hmm. Last yeah. year. That was awesome. And that was, <laughs> yeah, that, but that was like not really like official, right? It wasn't like a part of the season, if I remember that correctly. Yeah, it was... It was their first ever world table tennis event when pretty much everything was shut down. But yeah, they had like the the world tour, the the WTT Macau, and then there was one other, the grand finals or something were yeah, all yeah, in yeah. China. So I think they just played them yeah. all because the players could just stay in quarantine. But I yeah, I don't think it was like like you said, official per se. Yeah. So this one hopefully will um have adam bobro <laughs> hopefully he'll be able to get there and uh do some commentating that's what i'm looking forward to but um it looks cool they're doing two events there's a contender event and a star event let me um let me pull it up because i don't remember the specifics but i believe the star one is the bigger event the contender is more like the um, what was the old comparisons? There's a platinum series world tour. And then I think there was like the bronze. Yeah. Well, they had like the, they had the different like gold and silver events. And then there was like yeah. the, I don't remember the name of it. There was like an outlier event kind of thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's um the prize pool is $600,000, oh, which is so a little, <laughs> which is short from the, I think Macau was a million, wasn't it? The Macau was, was weird because you won money based off of how many, like a, every match you won, you won more money, but then they also had bonuses where if you went undefeated, cause some of the, some of the matches were like round robin and yeah. Macau had, had like bonus prize money for, for different things. And I don't remember what the full prize money was, but it was a ton. 600,000 cool. is still a ton. I love it. That's, that's what the yeah. sport really needs. We need to, ha to have money. So, so players stay in the sport. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it looks like there's, um, I don't know. Let's see. They've, they've already announced some of the people. So for the star contender event, you're, we're going to have like Sun Ying Shaw, Mima Ito, Liu Xuan, I haven't seen her in a little bit. Ching Yi Ching, um, Kasumi Ishikawa. So, like, kind of that like seems the, to be all of the um, big ones. The top names, yeah. Yeah. I wonder uh, if I could be US... considered a contender. <laughs> not the star, <laughs> not the star series, not the but star. maybe the, the lower series. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, it looks like uh, Adriana Diaz is going to be there. Um, I don't see uh, Lily Zhang will be there. Okay, cool. So okay. we've got. What about some... Kanak? Is Kanak in that? Let me check. I, I was looking at the women's. 
Canuck wasn't in the WTT Macau. He was in, yeah. or Lily was there, and she did pretty good. She won the first round and then yeah. lost in the second round. But I think it was like 15 grand or something that she won for winning one match. <laughs> it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it doesn't look like Canuck is on the um, kind of the entry list. Mm. I'm trying to look. I've got the font pushed really low on my browser so it's like hard to see um liam pitchford's there um it looks like there is um there are some qualifiers and i'll have to message kanak and ask him what's going on with that i wonder if there's i wonder if he's yeah. busy with the bundesliga or anything like that speaking of the bundesliga it's it's not on our outline but kanak got second place in the Bundesliga. Uh, his team did. And wow. that's pretty awesome. Like he almost won it. <laughs> I think Timo's team won and he had to play Timo and it was it was a decently close match, but it he ended up losing it. Um but I was yeah. just like I couldn't get over the fact like he almost won the Bundesliga. <laughs> like it would yeah. have been, it's just super awesome. So that's awesome. It's good to see him doing good over there. Yeah, he's not even on the list. Um, it looks like there is one USA entry for the men's. Um, Michelle Levinsky. Really? Interesting. I have no idea who that is. That, does that name sound familiar? I I do recognize the name. I can't put a face to it right now. I. Who is that? <laughs> I, I know all of <laughs> I know all of the top US players, but yeah. Yeah, I definitely know that name. I can't, I can't, I can't picture who he is though. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. Interesting. So, um, yeah, that'll be really great to watch. Hopefully, I I don't know that if there's any news on like how you can watch it. They usually don't tell you until like I get a Twitter alert the the like minute of that they're like doing it on Twitter or YouTube. Who knows? But hopefully, it'll be a um, it'll be easy to watch for people around the world. Um, speaking of around the world, uh, we, we finally have a weird world of table tennis. Um, if you've listened, if you remember, I think it was about this time last year, wasn't it? That we talked about the Ukrainian betting yeah. on the betting on the Ukrainian table tennis league. Yeah. And it was eventually shut down because like players were, throwing matches and stuff. <laughs> and I think we talked about that as well. So it started up again with Russian leagues. And yeah. <laughs> these are, I don't know, like, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit in the past where it's like, you, you basically bet on table tennis matches in Russia and they're all yeah. like in the basement of some mafia house by the looks of it. <laughs> and <Yeah>. it's... <laughs> It's really bizarre because most of these people, no one's ever heard of. So if, yeah. if yeah. like the table tennis community has never heard of them, like how are these odds makers putting up, like betting odds on these players? Like it, it seems impossible <laughs> and just totally random and it's totally just taken off. And I think in 2020, I, I've been reading tons of articles on this and in 2020, I read somewhere that it was the most bet on sport in America. It was Russian table tennis. That's like that's that's crazy, like random. I don't know. I mean, Americans love to bet on sports, and yeah. usually it's football and baseball and basketball and yeah. stuff. But since those have all been pretty much non existent, I mean, we had an NFL season, we had a college football season, we had a basketball sort of season. But they were all cut short. Weren't they were they? all cut short. Well, NFL and college football, college football was sort of cut short for some of the divisions, but oh, okay, um, or some of the conferences, I should say. And then NFL was a normal season, and that's usually like yeah. the biggest sports betting in the world, probably. Maybe, yeah. maybe not with soccer, but it's up there for sure. Mm. And yeah, but table tennis took the cake. <laughs> Tons so of betting. <laughs> There's so there was a New York Times article written um, at the end of January that uh, that um, we'll share in the show notes. But 
it was it was so good because it kind of captured everything like the the reporter interviewed a lot of people who were doing the betting he inter like talked to the betting sites where they're all happening he like you know i don't know if he put any placed any bets himself but you know he he like watched the matches and it, it's a really good like kind of comprehensive article on everything that's been going on so we'll put that in the show notes um it's definitely worth a read um and um yeah, it, 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 uh, it surprised me because if you search New York times for table tennis, it is like the, it's like the first time in the last, maybe like five years that, um, New York times has written about table tennis, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but it's also kind of funny. Um, that this is the reason that people are talking about table tennis. I mean, I, I think we can use any publicity that we can get, right? Like if people are betting yeah. on ping pong, like let's, let's live it up. <laughs> this is, it's a good way to get people interested in the sport in in my opinion. So. Yeah, totally. I, I noticed that um, one of the, one of the things that they talk about in the article is one of the guys who was betting, he like, you know, because he was betting on it, he wanted to like understand what the odds were and kind of improve his chances. So For he sure, actually yeah. started learning about the players and like learning more about the sport and keeping track of things. And I think that's really cool if it could just transfer to something that's a little more like uh, maybe real because I, I have I have like serious questions about the like validity of a lot of these games, <laughs> considering they're happening in Russia and and like you said, probably in the basement of some like gangsters <laughs> house or, um, compound or something. So, um, I don't know that it's that, that legit. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't <laughs> think anyone knows. <laughs> yeah. It's like a coin flip. Yeah. All right. Well, before like the last part of our episode, um, what we wanted to do was in honor of Black History Month uh, for February, um, we wanted to kind of talk about some notable African-American U.S. table tennis players. Um, I um, did not know much about it, many of them or any of them. Um, you know, a lot of the people that... Um, I play with or I've seen around or that compete um, nationally are usually uh, now they're usually Asian American, uh, but, you know, previously they're usually white or um, something like that. And so uh, it was cool for me to look back and see like how uh, like there were really cool African American people like doing cool things in table tennis history. Totally. Yeah. Um, there have been, cool. I mean, several we will talk about here in a second, but yeah, yeah, for sure. It's neat. So um, the, the big one to talk about is uh, George Braithwaite. The chief is his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I feel like, I feel like I need a nickname because it seems like the coolest people always have cool nicknames. Um, he is, well, one of the great resources that helped me a lot when looking into this is the USTT, USATT has a Hall of Fame that they induct people in every um, year. Mm -hmm. And that was a great resource for like people in table tennis history uh -huh. um, to look up uh, different people. So um, there's a great profile on him in the uh, Table Tennis Hall of Fame, but um, he unfortunately passed away in October of last year. Yeah, just recently. Um, which 2020 was a bad year for everybody. <laughs> um, he was playing in the late 60s to like late 1980s, which is like a pretty wide, it's like 20 year uh, range that he was playing um, nationally. Um, and I believe some internationally. He, um, in 1971, he went to the world championships in Nagoya, Japan. He was on the U.S. team. Um, and if you've read uh, the ping pong diplomacy book or you've heard about ping pong diplomacy, he was that was the team that actually went to China and um, played with the Chinese team and was responsible for like a lot of diplomacy opening up between the U.S. and China back in in the early 70s, um, which is like crazy. Like really cool. That, yeah. Yeah. That's like a huge uh, 
<laughs> it's like, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm sure that when he went to Japan, like he wasn't planning on <laughs> like all of that stuff happening, but it's like, it's cool anyways, that he got the opportunity to do that. Um, so yeah. he, the ping pong diplomacy be, team is like, I mean, it's legendary and just, yeah. I mean, to be part of that is pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So um, he actually beat your coach, uh, Danny C. Miller, at the um, U.S. Open in 1973, um, which is cool. I guess that was back when they were still playing to 21. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> was that was that in the uh, in the article, the Hall of Fame article that you mentioned or like I, I mean, think that's a pretty so. good win for anybody. But yeah, I think Danny was the number one in the in in the U.S. at that time. I think that's oh, what okay. was why it was kind of like a notable. Gotcha. Man. Okay. Um, cool. He's uh, George Braithwaite is in the Hall of Fame. Um, he there's a video of him hitting against uh, Shu Shen at the um, ping pong diplomacy event in 2019. Um, it's like a recurring cool. thing. The ping pong diplomacy ever since 1971. It's they've had like meetings, not like every year, but every so often they'll have meetings. Um, yeah. With so he, the the original team a lot of times will will go to the pink, like those events. Yeah. The events. So, yeah. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I'd like to hit against Shushin. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. And what was cool is like, he has his own, he has his own website and basically like he continued to be a big advocate for table tennis until like he passed away last year. Like he was, um, I think for uh, several times he was like in the, he was, I think he was like a vice president in the USATT um, for a while. And he, I think, was responsible for creating like a kind of like a players, almost like a players rights group um, back in the day when basically, you know, he was he was a big advocate for um, actually paying players, like putting more money into table tennis to to actually improve it, Um, which is, I know, a big thing that Danny was always um, talking about as well so okay so that's george braithwaite um there's also norman bass jr who is um i don't even know how like people do this but he is like a three-time professional athlete he started off in baseball he was a pitcher for the kansas city athletics which i think they moved to oakland i guess um after he had an injury and he couldn't pitch anymore. He played football for the Denver Broncos, which is like crazy. Um, I don't know how many players actually have done these kind of like multi. I don't only, think there's a lot. Only like right? the the best of the best. Like Michael Jordan did some baseball yeah. and some golf, and um, Bo Jackson did baseball and NFL football. And oh yeah, maybe maybe another sport, but. Yeah, it's it's usually the, like the all stars are can kind of pick up different sports and yeah uh, and Norman Bass is one of them. <laughs> it's crazy. He, so he played and so in the set. Yeah, so go ahead. Oh yeah, so in the seventies he started playing table tennis and then um, he I guess because of his injuries he he played um, kind of like in the Paralympic um, type tournaments and so he actually in the in the year 2000 after like playing sports for like 40 or 50 years he won a bronze medal in the paralympic games in sydney which is like insane um yeah he's he's still alive i think it said he's like 80 something years old so um probably still playing table tennis i hope yeah, you'll see. So I've met George Braithwaite and Norman Bass. And you'll see him, not George oh, cool. anymore, obviously, but he goes to a lot, or they used to go to the big tournaments like the U.S. Open, U.S. Nationals. So hopefully if there's a U.S. Open this year and Nationals, then hopefully Norman will be there and can say, hey, <laughs> we heard That's you about, cool. or maybe heard about even you on the, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, maybe even the Worlds. He'll be oh, there yeah, maybe the Worlds, yeah. If they happen in Houston. Up. That'd be awesome. Um, okay, so... So somebody else um, is Jennifer Johnson. Um, She is actually a wheelchair table tennis player. Um, But man, she has won so many medals. Um, She's been playing like she probably still plays, but she started competing internationally. She won a silver medal 
in 1972 um, at the Paralympic Games. Um, she was actually playing for Jamaica at the time, which is where she's um, originally from. And then in 84, she started playing for the U.S., she won two silver medals at the Paralympic Games in 84. 96, she won a gold in Atlanta. And 98, she won two gold medals in Seoul, Holy cow. South Korea. Which is like, I mean, that's like 25 years that she was winning medals in the Paralympic Games internationally. Um, that's pretty awesome. That is super awesome. <laughs> I, wow. <laughs> I... Man, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, and so she she's also in the Hall of Fame. All of these people are in the Hall of Fame. And I'll ha we'll have links to more information about them in the show notes. Um, and then there was another player that you used to play with. Is that right? Yeah, so I used to play with a kid, Marcus Jackson. He um, he was a top – He was he's maybe a year or two younger than me. But he was a top U.S. junior uh, when he was 17. He, what was kind of neat about him is he never trained overseas. He was just like a pure American-born, American-trained table tennis player. And he was super good. Cool. He, was, he was the best in the U.S. for his age. Um, he, he was the last one to beat Wong Zen from Canada, who I think has been the top Canadian player for at least probably a decade or more. Um, but then wow. he ended up quitting when he went to school when he went to college. So he, yeah, again, I mean, that's a pretty common story for us players is when it kind of, when it comes time to sure. decide between table tennis and college, most people choose college so he can make a career. So kind of unfortunate, but yeah. awesome player, awesome guy. So I still talk with him sometimes. Do you still keep up with him at all? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. He lives in Chicago now. So, and I grew up around Chicago. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Nice. Okay, so those are um, those are some cool um, African American uh, players you can look up more information on. Um, and yeah, basically that's pretty much our episode. Um, what are some upcoming events? Um, yeah, so the 2020 Worlds was finally canceled. They had postponed it, I think, three times, <laughs> and then finally they're like, "Okay, we're not going to postpone yeah. it anymore. It's we're not going to do it." So unfortunate there this is the one that was in korea right in korea and that was going to be the first time it was going to be in korea and they they're they're hoping to do wow. another yeah pretty surprising um because korea is great at table tennis they've got a lot of really good players um, yeah yeah and it's in like the like the asian hub with like japan and china pretty close by so right um Right. Yeah, so they got canceled. They're trying to host. Uh, they're asking to host an, like a like a major table tennis event some other time in 2021. So we'll see if that happens. But mm. for now, the world's is canceled, um, and they don't have anything planned for Korea yet. Um, mm. The U.S. Olympics mm. was is is scheduled for July 23rd to August 8th. So hopefully that is doesn't get delayed anymore. Um, that's the 2020 Olympics. It'll be later this year. And then the 2021 Worlds, which okay. was supposed to be pretty much right now in Texas. It's probably a good thing it's not in Texas right now with all the storms they're having. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It's scheduled to be after the Olympics. They don't have a date yet, but hopefully it'll happen because okay. I want to see it. I want to be there if I can. <laughs> and, um, so that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, tentatively planned for later this year after the Olympics. So, yeah. And that, and you mentioned, I think, I think this is a good, uh, like, um, connection is that like, if they go forward with the Olympics, since that's a bigger event, likely the world will be in a better place. So hopefully yeah. the world's happening after the Olympics means that it will hopefully like actually happen. Yeah. Like if you think about the Olympics, I mean, that's a, that's a huge event. One of the biggest events, probably the biggest sporting event in the world every four years. Yeah. So if they can For sure, manage yeah. to hold that one, then they should be able to figure out how to hold the world championships, which is, I mean, it's a big event for table tennis, but it's much yep. smaller than the Olympics. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. And then as far as U.S. tournaments, there was the, they had canceled, USA Table Tennis had canceled everything up through January 15th. So we're past the 15th and I believe they're like, 
tournaments are happening again. So um, you'll start to see those pop up on USA Table Tennis's website. And there's actually one in Amarillo, mm. Texas that um, I've been looking at that I might be going to. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I know it's going to be a pretty big one. I think there's like a thousand dollars for first place. I know a few of the players who are going, so I'd like to, cool. I'm thinking about going. It's always tough when you have a little baby to travel with. It's, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. we'll see how things go. Are you, are you going to compete or just to, yeah, I'd like to, to compete. Watch. If I, if I go, I would go to compete for sure. Cool. So yeah. Otherwise, cool. I mean, that's like, I don't know, a 15 hour drive at least probably to get there. So I don't, I don't want to go and watch for, for that yeah. amount of time in the car. So anyway, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's all. Those are all the events all right. that I'm aware well, of. So. Okay. Sorry. Well, I guess that's it for our episode. Any, any last words? Um, I don't know. Nope, that's, that's all I've got. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And uh, okay. it's good to do the video. It's kind of fun to, to do the video and we'll see how it goes. See how it turns out. Yeah. F- feel free to leave us a comment on YouTube. It's probably going to be the easiest way to comment on the um, podcast moving forward. So um, let us know what you think. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Table Tennis Talk is a monthly podcast by Joey Cochran and Ryan Lewis. Find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And send us questions on our Facebook page at Table Tennis Talk Podcast or on Twitter at TT Talk Podcast.